and the next talk will be about magnesium and it will be given by Dr. Tauber from the International Magnesium Association. The stage is yours. Thank you. I see so many people leaving the room, so. <laughs> uh, so good afternoon. Uh, my name is Martin Tauber. I'm uh, representing the uh, International Magnesium uh, Association and uh, being here in a more carbon fiber uh, event, uh, I keep the flag high for magnesium and take you through a, a, a journey about the uh, probably the, uh, the lightest structural metal that we currently uh, know. Uh, working on this uh, event, I think two and a half years, three years, finally be here, I'm very glad. My talk would be completely different two years ago. So. But you, you, you will see why in a minute. Uh, the International Magnesium Association uh, is uh, representing the whole value chain from the, the primary producers, uh, the secondary producers, uh, the tier one companies, the OEM companies, universities, institutes uh, on, a, on, a, on a global level. It's a long standing uh, group. Uh, we were founded in 1943. And uh, we have a flagship event every, every year, and uh, I will let you know at the end of presentation, as the presentation where we're going to meet uh, this year. Uh, my talk will be uh, about uh, global challenges for light weighting and, and, and magnesium then in particular. Uh, coming to the context of this uh, event, also about the carbon footprint implications and, and the outlook. Uh, also um, a kind of market outlook if you want, uh, then our vision for uh, making uh, green, enabling green magnesium as well to the industry, and also I give you a short uh, status quo of the European Commission's work on uh, bringing primary production of magnesium back into uh, Europe. So I'm already here. Uh, this slide, uh, I think it's well known by all of you, it's, uh, it's the evolution of a well-known car, of a Volkswagen Golf, uh, starting in uh, 1940, uh, for 74, with around 800 kilo, with 3.7 meters. Uh, and if you compare that with the uh, equivalent of uh, the latest Golf ID3, uh, then this already has a weight of, of 1.7. Uh, two five uh, uh, tons, uh, and with the uh, high, uh, the the, the uh, battery of 82 kilowatt, even uh, uh, 100 kilo uh, more. Uh, the industry is saying that the combination of the lightweight construction and the battery cell, chem uh, cell chemistry uh, is the crucial element uh, for the future of at least uh, electrified uh, vehicles. Uh, a little bit, and I've promised you a kind of a journey for, for magnesium. Uh, I think in all materials we have a very high prices now and a kind of a tight market situation because of China, because of, uh, of Russia as well. Uh, in magnesium, this already started in, uh, in August last year, where uh, uh, Chinese uh, production was cut by almost uh, 60% in, uh, in September. Uh, so there was a, a shortage uh, foreseen for, the, or, or for the, uh, the aluminum industry in, uh, in, in Europe. Uh, there were the fear of, uh, of shutdowns. Uh, some reasons were uh, geopolitical coal supply to China uh, with less quality coal, uh, environmental inspections uh, because of the CO2 policy in China and also the Winter Olympic Games which were the reason uh, a couple of years ago uh, for a, a, a shortage. Uh, and we ended up with four times higher prices, and at the moment we are still in a high price situation. Uh, talking about what is the cause for that, uh, you can pin that on many things, but, but uh, mostly it's pinned on uh, China's policy to cut uh, energy consumption. Uh, and this is here a, a chart where you see different regions. So magnesium is also pr produced in different regions in China. By the way, uh, China is, is, is responsible for 85% of the global production of, uh, of magnesium, and almost 100% of the imports to Europe are coming from, uh, from, from China. Uh, so here you see different regions. It's kind of a, a, a traffic light system. 
Uh, red means that this region has already used a lot of energy, so it's in the scope of, 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 uh, of curbing uh, the energy consumption. And this is a kind of instrument where we keep very close, uh, and the, also uh, aluminium and steel keep very close eye on that, because it can uh, forespell uh, a next, uh, next crisis. Uh, I will just back one slide. These are the, uh, the exports, having said that 100% of the exports uh, into Europe of uh, magnesium coming in for, from, from China. There you see the exports uh, on, on a monthly basis. You see actually no big interruptions uh, and uh, we are back to a, to a normal level now. But all the fear about uh, the, uh, the production cutdowns and so on, so created uh, higher, higher prices. Uh, I come to a market outlook. Uh, there you see so almost a 20 years uh, market outlook. I have to go back here. Yeah, uh, a, a market outlook. So uh, we're, we're going from Olympics in China to Olympics in China. So that the, the, uh, on, 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 the, on, on the left side, uh, there was the, uh, the Summer Olympics where a lot of plants were shut down. Uh, then we had a, a, a market growth of about uh, 6% uh, globally, and now you see the dip in, in 2020, 2019, and we expect, and these are data from, uh, from a CM group from Australia, uh, we see about a, a market growth between 4 to 5% uh, until 2031, and uh, outperformed always uh, in the lightweight use for automotive. Uh, the segments where magnesium is used most is the, the red one. It's as an alloying element for the uh, aluminium uh, alloys. Uh, then blue is uh, die casting for automotive. Uh, green is uh, uh, titanium uh, production. Uh, 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 light blue is for steel desulfurization in, in powder form. And uh, then we have others and then we have other die casting uh, products as well, like chainsaw housing, computer housing, and uh, and so on. Uh, why is this important? Uh, why is LCA important for magnesium? Uh, it is because you know a normal car has about four to six kilograms uh, magnesium in there as as average. Aluminium has about 150, 180 kilograms. Uh, uh, but it comes more and more into, into the picture. Here's an example of uh, a life cycle assessment from a Polestar 2. And uh, you see the Polestar is, uh, Geely is, is comparing different uh, similar models. So the X40 uh, with a combustion engine, then the Polestar 2 with different energy grids. Uh, so on the right side, you have a, a green energy grid from uh, wind power. And what is important for the scope three or for a, for a material supplier is that the use phase, which is there in white, uh, the carbon footprint of the use phase with a combustion engine is a significant one because of the use of gasoline. Uh, but if those, such a car is using green energy, has access to green energy, uh, then this is, is minimized. So the production phase of the raw material gets into, into the, 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 uh, uh, the attention as well. Uh, I don't want to go into de uh, detail here, but you see that's the carbon footprint of uh, a, a pigeon process magnesium production in China. It's around uh, 22. Uh, the average for aluminium is around, is around 20, so it, it, it's uh, 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 comparable as well. Uh, we have uh, published a, a study, uh, and then we're going to have compared different uh, magnesium producers around the world. So we have around 15% uh, of the material is, due, is still produced outside China. In the study here, and, and I think that's, that's also too much detail, but the message is that there are current, currently magnesium producers with a lower carbon footprint, and there are projects in the making, in the pipeline, which uh, have also promising uh, production cap cap capabilities with a, a lower uh, carbon footprint. 
Uh, we have heard uh, in the, the Bosch lecture already, uh, scope uh, two, scope three, uh, scope two and scope one, scope three emissions. Uh, so every company is working on scope three. Having set this example for uh, the Polestar model, of course the scope three uh, will get a lot more attention uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the future. Uh, our industry can't do without China. Uh, so what is China promising? What is China doing here as well? And China's different regions, there's not one one big magnesium producer, there are, there are many, uh, about 70, 80 different uh, magnesium producers in different regions. So the central government has agreed to look into low carbon technologies, uh, more energy, uh, uh, green to in green, uh, use green energy, smelting technologies. Uh, but the main driver in China will be energy uh, monitoring. Uh, so, and this is here in red, so the cutting of energy consumption is a threat around the corner for every energy intensive industries to face uh, disruptions. Uh, our pathway to a, a, a green uh, magnesium is otherwise we count on China that they are making also their promises to a 2060 net zero uh, in industry in total. We have uh, within the magnesium industry, we have a significant project, a project portfolio on primary production and uh, ensure that we can reach until 2030 around 35% of global production with a significantly lower footprint than it's currently available from, uh, uh, from China uh, sources. Uh, we have made also in the study, uh, which is available on our websites, uh, several case studies. Here is a, a cross car beam uh, and it's a comparison between an aluminium part and a magnesium part. Many cars using a, a, a one shot model, a die casted model uh, as a cross car beam. Uh, you see that the uh, uh, magnesium part is a little bit lighter. Uh, and uh, there on the right side you have different processes in, in, in the production phase uh, of the part and we compare it to a global aluminium uh, average and that you see that, that only one process stands for QSLM, stands for uh, uh, Qinghai Magnesium, that's a, a, a plant in China, as offering a lower uh, car carbon footprint for the part. But that's only the production part. Uh, if we take the, the use phase into consideration here, uh, in short, that, that uh, almost every part, uh, uh, so every source, when you use a lighter material, is more efficient uh, in terms of uh, uh, carbon footprint than, for instance, this comparable uh, aluminium part. Um. Another case story is from, uh, from Volkswagen. Uh, this is not in production. Uh, this is a magnesium sheet uh, part. And uh, just to show you that we've, uh, uh, on, on the bottom, that we, uh, we have three different uh, options. Here, a steel part and uh, aluminium part. And with a magnesium part, you can normally save around uh, 15 to 25% compared to an aluminium part. Here, it's uh, at uh, 24 uh, percent. Uh, what is the threat? And as maybe I come back to what I said with the uh, the, the Volkswagen Golf before. Uh, you have, of course, a difference between a combustion engine car and uh, an electrified car. And here is a, a interesting study when we lower the weight of both cars with 100 kilo. Uh, then, uh, because the, uh, the electro engine is much more efficient than a combustion engine, the effect in a combustion engine car is much higher. So you, you, you have around uh, uh, the saving of 4.7 grams CO2 per kilometer in a combustion engine car, and compare that to the, uh, the electrified model, it's only 1.4. So we even have to put more effort in light weighting in combination with uh, uh, electrified uh, uh, vehicle. Uh, what that means is, for instance, and that the industry is trying to think in that direction, if you can reduce the weight, you can either reduce the range with the same battery, 
or you keep the same range and be able to, to uh, uh, lower the cost by using a smaller battery as well. So I think Renault is thinking now along these lines. So we'll see in, in the next uh, uh, years to come uh, this uh, concept as well. Uh, I've said that I will give you an, an status quo on, uh, on uh, an ad hoc working group uh, of, on the commission level. Uh, so when France took over the uh, presidency of, of, the, of, the, of, of, uh, of the European Union uh, at the ministry conference where raw material supply was high on the agenda, uh, one of the agenda points was also that they realized after uh, three critical raw material lists that uh, magnesium is very critical for the European industry, that we want to bring back uh, uh, primary production of, of magnesium into, into Europe. Uh, the International Magnesium Association, alongside with other industry uh, associations, uh, has formed a, a, a position paper and the Commission has asked different member states and also in Germany our activities on that to identify either brownfield or greenfield projects uh, for magnesium primary production. Uh, here are some of the uh, as I say, framework, what, 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 what is needed for that. So we need access to, to green, stable, uh, cheap uh, energy, of course. We would need a, a low carbon footprint uh, technology and access to uh, the raw material, uh, the infrastructure, maybe some uh, trade measures in place uh, at, at the beginning. Uh, so this uh, would be uh, frameworks to start up uh, European production again. The aim is about 15% of the 180,000 tons. With some market growth, we talk about 40,000 tons, which is either one big plant or two uh, mid sized uh, production plants. Uh, you're standing already, so that is my sign to, <laughs> to come to the uh, takeaways. Uh, sorry. Uh, to come to the uh, takeaways of my presentation. Uh, so uh, we said that the uh, magnesium production is highly dependent on production in China today uh, and the actual carbon footprint is comparable with uh, an aluminium global average. Uh, that we see a positive effect from light weighting in the use phase, but the use phase is challenged because of the more efficient of uh, uh, an electrical uh, engine. Uh, uh, so, and, and the, we have a, a pipeline prepared for the industry uh, to lower down the uh, uh, scope 3 uh, production as well. So this, with this, I uh, would like to invite you to our global conference, uh, which takes place in Barcelona from 29th to 31st of August. And uh, uh, please talk, talk to me in the breaks if you're interested. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for the very nice talk and the view on what challenges magnesium faces. Are there any questions? There's one, please use the microphone. Hello, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Uh, I wanted to ask about the recycling uh, about magnesium. You said that was this number was 65 and 95, meaning that, just to get it clear, that 95% of the aluminium is, re is reused, whereas only it's 65 of the magnesium? Is that? Uh, I haven't I've actually not touched on, on, on the recycling. So oh. the, the recycling stream is normally that we have, same with aluminium, we have process recycling uh, in die casting, which could be all from 10% also to 85%. When you consider a laptop housing mm. uh, with the screen, you have about 80% scrap of your, of your uh, initial raw material. So this goes back in, 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 in production. Uh, uh, the other recycling stream is within the, the aluminum alloys, mm -hmm. so, uh, but that, that stays with the aluminum stream. Okay. So a very low percentage is gonna be a waste or, or landfill. Okay, thanks. <laughs>